Now, if national governments embrace electric vehicles, how should their adoption be accelerated? How are municipal, state, national and supranational governments playing their roles? What policy instruments are available? And which ones are being employed in the stimulation of electric mobility? In view of the adverse health effects of NOx and particulate matter in the air we breathe, these and many other compounds are subject to air quality standards. In the European Union, air quality standards have been established by the, Euro by the European Commission to be enshrined in national law by the Member States. Air quality standards are usually expressed in hourly average, daily average and yearly average limits. Enforcing air quality standards thus requires an extensive monitoring effort on a national scale. In the Netherlands and in many other countries, we have a fine-meshed national monitoring network for air quality, which provides regional, city-level and even street-level data on important air quality parameters, such as particulate matter, you know, the PM10 and PM2.5 standards that we just discussed. Uh, but also for nitrogen dioxide, for ammonia and many other compounds. Moreover, on top of all the local and national monitoring efforts, environmental data are collected with satellites. The next slide shows you some images from the Skyamaki environmental satellite, one of the European ESA satellites, which measured NO2 concentrations in the troposphere. And the images, as you can see, clearly show that the highest tropospheric NO2 concentrations are found at the locations of big cities and at the locations of centers of industrial manufacturing activity. As we discussed previously, road traffic contributes substantially to the emissions of NOx and particulate matter. For that reason, many national, regional and municipal governments have been keen to curb traffic and to stimulate cleaner transportation in many different ways. California was the first in 1990 to install zero emission vehicle regulation and it is still expanding that effort in order to meet its air quality and greenhouse gas emission reduction goals. By 2050, 87% of cars on the roads of California must be zero emission vehicles. The California Air Resources Board targets the car manufacturing industry as well as the demand side of the market. New motorized vehicles and engines must be certified by the California Air Resources Board for emission compliance before they are legal for sale, use or registration in California. Consumers are stimulated in different ways to buy plug-in hybrid and zero emission vehicles. They are entitled to rebates on the buying price of qualifying clean cars and given permission to use dedicated high occupancy vehicle lanes even if they are driving their cars on their own without any passengers. The California state is furthermore co-funding the rollout of new infrastructure. Hydrogen infrastructure for hydrogen fuel cell electric cars, hydrogen internal combustion engine cars, as well as recharging infrastructure for battery electric vehicles. By the end of 2017, 50 hydrogen fueling stations are expected to be operational in California and approximately 1,000 public charging stations are already available for plug-in electric vehicles. However, electric vehicles and other zero emission vehicles are not the only solution to improve the livability of the urban environment. Municipal governments have many options to choose from in developing clean and smart mobility strategies. They are keen to reduce the number of cars on the road in order to reduce congestion by offering attractive zero or low emission public transport options. Many big cities already rely on mass rapid transit systems based on train, metro or light rail systems, but also bus rapid transit systems, such as in the Brazilian city of Curitiba. Moreover, many cities are replacing their conventional bus fleets or converting them to low or zero emission fleets based on natural gas or hydrogen, if not electric. Many municipal governments are also actively stimulating their residents to walk 
and cycle by allocating more public space to pedestrians in car-free areas and providing green corridors with dedicated walkways and cycling infrastructure. Many cities worldwide have also established environmental zones where the most polluting cars are forbidden access. On top of national stimulation measures, cities are also developing their own initiatives to encourage zero emission vehicles such as EVs through subsidies, provision of free parking permits and aggressive expansion of new public charging infrastructure. The city of Amsterdam, for example, expects to increase the current number of more than 2,000 public charging stations in the city to 4,000 in 2018. That is uh, doubling uh, in, uh, within one year. Many national, state and municipal governments act as launching customers and role models by turning their own vehicle fleets into zero or low emission vehicle fleets. When it comes to carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions, we see policy measures being developed at a different level in a concerted effort between nation states. In Europe, approximately 50% of greenhouse emission sources are covered by the European Emission Trading System, a market in which emissions from a variety of sources are traded under a cap, and that cap is gradually lowered. Many states and countries outside Europe are experimenting with or have already established their own emission trading systems, such as, for example, China. But emissions by vehicles on the road are not covered by the European emission trading system. They are subject to emission reduction targets that are defined by the European Commission per member state and per sector not covered by the trading system. With the so-called Clean Mobility Package, launched in November 2017, the European Commission commits to very ambitious targets of European fleet-wide carbon dioxide emissions of new passenger cars and vans to help accelerate the transition to low and zero emission vehicles. Both for new cars and vans, the average CO2 emissions will have to be 30% lower in 2030 compared to 2021. Even if the clean mobility package is largely driven by the Paris Climate Agreement, it will also help substantially to improve the air quality in cities. Moreover, the package addresses the need for better efficiency in all modes for transport of goods, requiring new technologies, as well as a better organization of transport processes with new business models. The clean mobility package thus fits into the wider European policy to make European industry stronger and more competitive, striving for world leadership in innovation, digitization and decarbonization. With the latest EU package of energy policy measures, clean energy for all Europeans, and now I'm quoting, the Commission wants the EU to lead the clean energy transition, not only adapt to it. Today's proposals of the European Union have three main goals, putting energy efficiency first, achieving global leadership in renewable energies, and providing a fair deal for consumers. While the package does not specifically refer to electric vehicles, it does contain measures to ensure the rollout of infrastructure for electric mobility at all buildings, including non-residential buildings. Wrapping up. So far we have seen a variety of policy instruments being employed. Law and regulation, monitoring and law enforcement, financial inf instruments, technology development and innovation, and behavioral measures. We have seen supranational, national and state governments struggling to reconcile climate policy, energy policy, industry policy and air quality goals while satisfying increasing mobility needs. In general, governments are reluctant to select one specific technology to support, 
so as not to distort competition in the market and put a potentially better technology at a disadvantage. At some point, however, the government has to intervene in setting standards to accommodate new technology, such as standards for public charging infrastructure in the case of electric vehicles. Besides the competition between different zero emission vehicle technologies, governments have many other options to improve livability and air quality in cities by improving public transport and providing better infrastructure for pedestrians and cyclists they offer a new choice architecture aimed at making other options and using the car the preferred choice.